Okay, well today we're going to talk about how to estimate the population mean when we do not know sigma, which is our population standard deviation. This is actually a more realistic case. I told you that the last couple of minutes of class last time. I said that really, are we going to know the population standard deviation most of the time? Not in practical experience, you're gonna, you might approximate it every once in a while, but you're really not going to know it because you have to know this to even find that. You got to know that. So maybe based on past experience, you do know what this is, but it's, it's rare. It's not going to happen all the time. So perhaps a more real life scenario is, how in the world are we going to estimate the population mean when we know absolutely nothing about it? And that's what this section is about. So this is perhaps a little bit more realistic. Uh, one thing the problem is, the, the one thing that we, we have to struggle on a little bit is if you don't know sigma, you can't use a z-score. The requirements, they're not met. So if you go back and you check those requirements from the last section, it said random sample, great. And the next one was, you know sigma. Do we know sigma? Nope. So we can't use a z-score. We can't use a z-critical value. That's a problem for us. Instead, what we're going to use we use a t-score. You know what? What was that again? A t-score? You've never heard of a t-score before. Instead, we use a t-score. A long time ago, there was this guy he actually worked in a brewing factory. And uh, he didn't know, he wanted to do the, these experiments on, on beer to find out uh, different characteristics about them. But he, firstly, he didn't have large sample sizes. He didn't have more than 30 different vats to, to sample from. Uh, but he knew that the, the distribution would be normal, so you can use some of this stuff, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, finally, he didn't know the population standard deviation because, of course, you can't have the population of all, all beer all the time. So he had to come up with something new. So this guy, he wrote into a journal under the, the name of Student T. Student T. Uh, he, he used a pseudonym because he didn't want himself associated with this to do the beer crossover because he was using their, their information. So that's where we get the T distribution from. So Student T, this one guy wrote into a, a journal someday. As, long time ago, and that's where this is all coming from. Are you with me? So some guy did the work and actually calculated a new table for us. Here's what we need for a t-score. First thing, just like always, we absolutely have to have a random sample. Number two, besides the fact that we need a random sample, we've got to know that our sample is from a normal distribution, from a population that's normally distributed, or n has to be greater than 30. <coughs> Does that sound familiar to you? That's the same thing that we, we just talked about. So, n is greater than 30 for sure. Or, if n is not greater than 30, you absolutely must have the sample coming from a population that's normally distributed. So, or, the sample is from a normally distributed population. So that's got to be somewhere. Either your sample size is more than 30 or the population is normally distributed. In the past, we used a z-score to, to represent this. We had, what's x-bar stand for? Everybody should know that. What's x-bar stand for? Sample, sample mean. Great. We would do sample mean minus population mean all over sigma over the square root of n. Does that look familiar to you, I hope? That was for those groups, right? For the average of a, of a sample. That was it. The problem is, 
we can't use a z-score in these contexts because of one thing. We don't have that. We don't have that piece of information. So instead, we're now going to translate that to a t-score. I think they use a lowercase letter t, but I can't write lowercase letters, so I use a capital T. So anyway, it's a t-score regardless. It's letter, letter t. Well, we, we're still going to be able to find a, a sample mean. That's fine. And that view, that's okay. That's our sample mean. We're comparing that to something. Uh, we're actually going to be estimating this. But here, right here, we can't use the population standard deviation because we don't know it. And we're not going to assume it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use S over the square root of n. What's S stand for? The sample. Sample what? What was this? What's that? Same thing. What is it? Sure. This one's from a... This one's from a... That's from a long time ago. We haven't used that lower case letter S in a long time. But that S stands for a sample standard deviation. So are the formulas pretty much identical? Yeah. Only this is from a sample instead of a population. That's really the only difference between a z-score and a t-score in finding the actual value here. Now, <coughs> the critical values, of course, are going to be very similar. So critical values Instead of Z, we're going to have T's, but it's still going to be that alpha. Remember the alpha? What's alpha for a 90% confidence level? How much is alpha? For a 90. How much is alpha? You don't have to look it up. You should know. No, not the, not the critical value. I'm saying alpha. 0.1. Sure. If your confidence is 90%, your alpha is 0.1. If your confidence is 95%, what's your alpha? 0 0.05. 0 0.5, no, 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 that's 50%. How about your alpha for a 0 0.99? What's your alpha? 0 0.01. 0 0.01, sure. Those things have to add up to 1, right? They're complementary. So we split that because we get those two tails for our, our, our uh, confidence intervals. That's the same stuff that we've been talking about. So critical values given by T's instead of Z's. That's basically all I'm saying there. Um, there's one more definition I need to give you. It's a definition called degrees of freedom. Here's how you find degrees of freedom. It means the degrees of choice uh, or, or, or choice in your sample. Here's degrees of freedom. We're going to signify it with a, a DF or abbreviate it. It is N. <coughs> N stand for again? Sure. Sample size minus 1. Very easy formula. Easiest formula you'll ever get. N minus 1. Sample size minus 1. So basically just your sample size minus 1. So if I have a sample of 90 people, degrees of freedom would be 89. Okay, we just subtract one. It is not a hard thing. It's not a trick question. Sample size of 50 would give you degrees of freedom of? Everybody? Excellent. Awesome. We're all getting it now. Yeah. You subtract one from the number and that gives you your degrees of freedom. Why? Why does it work? I'll give you a simple example. Um, if I'm picking, let, let's imagine this, all right? We're, we're talking about averages here. You with me? We're talking about averages. Uh, that's sample, sample averages, sample means. True or false? If I pick 10 numbers, I can make them have an average of 100. True? Can you pick 10 numbers that have an average of 100? Sure. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. I'm sorry, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. That's 10 numbers that have an average of 100, right? You can always do that. You could pick uh, five 100 ones and five 99s. That would have an average of 100, right? Those are very simple examples, but here's the idea. If I give you nine numbers, so set in stone,
If I give you nine numbers set in stone, and I ask you for the last, uh, I say uh, the average of these things, you don't have to write this down, just, just watch, okay? If I say you're picking ten numbers out that have to have an average of 100, and I say these first nine, I don't care what they are. Do, can, do you believe me that it does not matter what these nine numbers are, that last number has to be one particular number to give you an average of 100. Does that make sense? So for instance, I'm going to pick random numbers here. Negative 3, 5, 13, negative 1, 10, uh, 43, 78, 21, negative 304, and positive 2. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is there a way to make these average out to 100? Absolutely. But would that number be set in stone? Yes. Absolutely. So these numbers, whatever I give you, I have nine choices for, for picking out whatever ten numbers are going to average up to 100. I have nine choices. I can make them whatever I want, but the last one will be set in stone. The last one can be nothing else besides one number. If I change any of these ones, that one would have to change. This one is dependent on the other nine choices. So if you choose nine things, the last one's set in stone. That means your degrees of choice you have nine choices, but the last one will be guaranteed to be a certain value. Does that make sense to you? So that's where we get this degrees of freedom from. It says, yeah, okay, you've got almost the whole sample size worth of choice, but if you're trying to get a certain average, that last one's going to be set in stone. It's not going to move anywhere. Now people understood the idea of degrees of freedom. It's a, kind of a weird idea, right? Kind of a weird idea, but that's where we're getting that from. Okay, you ready? Ready for some, some real stuff, how to learn how to use the p-values? Good thing you're here today, right? So this is new. This is new stuff, finally. Let me give you a quick example. This is going to illustrate how to find a t-critical value. Let's say you have a sample of 23. From a normally distributed population. By the way, is that statement meaningful to you? Yes. If I didn't have this statement, would I be able to do anything? No. Why not? Because no. Ah. So this 23, that's our, that's our N. This means that I can use this stuff. The requirements are met now because I have it from a normally distributed population. That's important. What I want us to do is find the critical value That's T alpha over 2. For a confidence level of 95%. Find a T critical value for a confidence level of 95%. Okay, let's do this thing. Firstly, can you tell me what my N is? How much is my N? Okay, how much is my alpha? Can you tell me what my alpha is, please? How are you finding point zero five? Sure, great, because those thing, two things are complementary, they have to add up to one. This is point zero five, that's great. You all with me on the alpha's point zero five? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell me how much is my degrees of freedom? What's my degrees of freedom? How are you getting 22? 